and it'll be his task to preside over the training of this great defensive force of a million and a half men who are all volunteers and a great many of them old soldiers. Their orders, and this is something on which there has not always been clear understanding, are first of all to observe. Now here's an example. Set in a typical piece of country, downland and sea. Home guards patrolling in pairs, as always, keep watch for any sign of invasion by land or water. They have seen something. One man runs back to platoon headquarters to report, while the other continues to observe the country. At the home guard post, the men are well under cover in a gorse clump. The runner comes up with his report. The platoon commander receives the information, works out on his map where the enemy are going, and writes out a message for company headquarters. He states the exact time and place and numbers of enemy seen, where they are going, and what action he is himself taking. He gives the message to a motorcyclist dispatch rider and details two more men to join the volunteer observing the enemy. Their duty is to keep contact and shoot if and when they are sure of a kill. That is the second task of the home guard, to shoot when they are sure of a kill. Meanwhile, the dispatch rider arrives at the company headquarters and hands in his message. Company commander telephones it to the military authorities, who will quickly bring the necessary forces to the scene of action. But the home guard volunteer hopes that there'll be nothing left for the regulars to do by the time they arrive. In the words of a senior home guard officer addressing his men, You are a new corps, a corps with its traditions to make. But you have already got your motto, and your motto is, kill the Bosch. In the course of your duty, you may have the luck to come in contact with the enemy. If you do, one of your duties is to shoot when you see a sitter, and shoot to kill. Thank <laughs> you.